lot of artists are, are releasing one song at a time, release the mm-hmm. whole album one song at a time, just spoon feed yeah. the fans, you know, waiting for the next one. What's your feelings on that? You know, it, it's it's funny because I can't imagine myself not or, or, or stopping putting albums together just because I'm just such a fan of albums. Um, and I thought that the continuity in an album was, was really cool and important. And yeah. So I think it would, I would probably miss it. It would almost be like, I don't have to write everything that I do, but if you told me I'm not ever writing anything else again, I would, uh, certainly I would miss it. And I think the whole process of putting an album together, it, I, I think I would miss that process. Um, you know, my label might come to me and go, you're not making any more albums, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, you know, just sitting here thinking about it, I, it would be hard for me not to do that. Yeah. The credits on this album, they, they're getting harder and harder to find. So how much of this record um, did you... I uh, have a listen to the album, but how, how much of it did you write or participate? I actually wrote every song on the... Or co-wrote uh, every song on the album. And throughout my career, I've written 90% of what I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the last album, just because we took a little bit of a different direction with it, I don't think I wrote, but maybe two or three of them, uh, which was a departure for me. Um, but there were guys in town I felt wrote that style of music, what we were doing, better than what I, I could do. And so I just kind of removed myself, and we went out and looked for, for songs. And, and so as we were discussing going back into the album to do another or the studio and do another album, I really wanted to make a concerted effort to go back and, and, and kind of go back in time to like early on in my career it was fun to get outside my comfort zone on the last album, and I enjoyed it, and commercially it was successful. But it also made me realize that what I do best is traditional country music, and it's what I enjoy doing most. Mm-hmm. And uh, once we made that decision to go back that direction, uh, I knew that I wanted to get back into the writing aspect of it because, I'm, you know, I missed it. You know, I missed having that voice. We all have those soul-searching moments where you go, Ugh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's not just music. I think just as people, mm-hmm. you know, we we you try to. It's not you know, you're not necessarily chasing somebody else's tail, but you know, as people, no matter what business you're in, you look at trends in business and change. things that go on. You know, change and whatever. Yeah, and. And and that's part of growing as an artist too. It's mm-hmm. like, I mean, I I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I'm only guessing that when you thought about doing that last record, it's like, okay, let's let take a run at this, you know? Yeah. What? Because it, it to me, it I know to you it did. To me, it didn't. Your last album didn't seem like a huge departure. Yeah, no, because I, of your voice, you know, and and your heart was in it. I mean, yeah. you performed it like your heart was in yeah. it. Well, thank you. Yeah, there were just moments. You know, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Somebody else will, which was a, a a big song off the last album. It just didn't sound like anything I'd ever done. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. It was fun, um, and it again, it was successful. But I don't know if it's getting older or more comfortable <laughs> with where I am in in this genre or w- whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. I just thought, you know what? As fun as that was, and I'm glad we did it. Like this is what I just absolutely love and I will Mm -hmm. throw myself into and give it every single ounce of energy I got, which is what the fans deserve. I read somewhere. I think that you, maybe you did a lot of this writing at your place down in Destin. I did. Um, you know, early on in my career, well, before I even had my record deal, when I first moved to town, so you're talking 17, 18 years ago, uh, my producer and I would just, pop down to Destin or that area, the Panhandle. It was six and a half, seven hour drive, rent a hotel room or a house, lock ourselves in, drink beer, write songs, <laughs> and no pressure really. And a, a lot of my first two albums came from those trips. Now we didn't have kids and wives and all that stuff at the time, so it was a little easier to to do that. So I told him when we wanted to go back this direction, I said, man, why don't we go to my house down there and just get you know, a handful mm-hmm. of guys that we love to write with and, and see what comes out of it. At least it'll be fun. And so over about a five, six week, uh, five or six weeks down there over a four or five month stretch, uh, we wrote probably 30, 40 songs. And 
I think because of that process, I I had more fun making this album than I've ever in any any stage of my career, you know. And the the guys that I was writing with made that possible. This the I think, and you know better than I do. It a change of scenery uh, can breed creativity. And uh, I'm not a guy. I don't know how how you are. I, even when I was in town, I can't go to an office at ten o'clock and write on a Tuesday. And I don't really write well on the road, mm. personally. And so I'm always trying to find some other way of, of doing it. Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know, we love the beach, and we had good vibes from years ago of doing that. And somehow we slipped it past our wives, and they bought it as a work trip. And <laughs> hopefully it's going to pay off now. <laughs> there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing about this album to me, though, that smells like beaching. No, no, not so at all. So do you have any trouble... You have any trouble just getting looking out there at the sand and whatever, and not, and not going and to not Margaritaville? Going yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's you got to rely on the people that you're writing with too, and and um, they all we I made it very clear what I was going for, and we're talking about guys who are way better at doing this than I am. Uh, obviously, they've been doing it for years and years and years, and. And so, um, you know, they help keep you between the mm-hmm. the, the, the lines, you know. So. I do, I do smell a lot of whiskey and heartbreak <laughs> and yeah. heartache and whatever on this album. It seems like the more kids you have, <laughs> Justin, the the deeper in the gutter you're going. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Well, I know I have three weddings to pay for coming, and so, uh, but no, it's. Um, you know how it's so rare when you do have a family, uh, and this is not a bad thing, but it's so rare that you have the opportunity to do things like trips like that without your wife and family. And so, yeah, we might have enjoyed a, a few too many cocktails, <laughs> but I, I would like to think they resulted in some some songs that otherwise we wouldn't have gotten. So there is, I think, you know, people just lose track sometimes, and and I know I've been certainly criticized as as I've gotten older. For writing heartache songs or or young love songs or whatever you know, and I think sometimes fans forget that it's not just where we are in the moment. You know, I mean, calling on memories and and those strong times that really affected a point in our life, they keep coming back yeah. when you start writing again. Those are the moments that just rear their heads again, mm-hmm. and you just want to go revisit it because it. It was something that really made an impact on you, no matter what the emotion was. That's a great point. That's a great point. And it's it's our job as songwriters and artists, if you don't even write the songs, to put out music that people can relate to. And and like you said, it, no, I'm happily married now. Everything's great, you know, but I remember having my heart broken or, you know, breaking uh-huh. somebody's heart and all that stuff. And if it wasn't me personally, I knew people who went through it and, and they shared with me how how difficult it was at the time for them, and so yeah, I, I I think that's a great point. Which I guess makes me ask the question: When you go to write a song, who are you singing to? You know that guy out there that that is having trouble paying his bills. He just scraped enough money together uh, after he got done paying alimony and working enough overtime to buy a ticket to the show, or the the happy happily married couple out there depending on the song obviously and and so uh, i think just like i said the, the reason country music is i think so great is it's so relatable you know there are more people out there who can relate to different things than you realize mm-hmm. but all of those people is kind of I, that was a long way of saying those no those are the ones that make you feel good i i remember you know ronnie and i just you know, kind of had a little personal prayer meeting when we wrote Red Dirt Road, just about where we came from. You know, it was great, South Arkansas way. for him and North Louisiana for me and talking about my grandfather. And he was talking about his grandfather and going up and down those roads and whatever. And, you know, first we said, we got to call our album that. This is the first time we've ever found something really That's... in common with each other, you know. And then it's like, well, we got to write a song. But when we got it done, like like a lot of things, it's like, well... All right, this is about our little part of the world, but one of our first shows after that was in New Jersey. A guy came up, you know, and after that song had made it, and he said, man, 
y'all wrote my song. That's my that story. I go, where are you from, man? He goes, I'm from right here in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Well, and I, it's exactly what you're talking about. But and you you may have had this misconception too. I did. I know. But people where I grew up, which is not far from where you grew up, you think the only country people are down south. <laughs> you just don't think. But let me tell you something. It's country in New York. Yeah. Ohio. California, it's country. There's country out there everywhere. You get outside the city, twenty minutes, and it, it's it's pretty country. Big rural areas yep. and all those places. You're uh, the ones that didn't make it back home. That this song, and you, I don't know how much you know about my history, but you know I've made Iraq and Afghanistan, and I'm a big fan of our military and our country, obviously. Um, this is a time when people aren't necessarily thinking that way because we're we're not so much in the middle of a public war as we have mm-hmm. been in recent years, you know. What made you feel like this was the right thing to do now? Well, obviously, like you, I'm, I support our military servicemen and women, and, you know, that was something that was instilled in me uh, by my grandpas, one of which was in the Air Force and one was in the Navy. And so uh, along with my parents, that was something that was kind of seared into my brain is these people matter and they sh- they're they to be honored and respected. And so growing up, that was something that, that was imposed upon me, something that I hope to sh- share with my own kids. And, um, you know, it goes beyond our military too. Our our, our police officers, firefighters, uh, teachers, unfortunately, are in the line of duty now. Mm-hmm. It's a sad thing to have to say, but it's the truth. Um, and so, I wanted to 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 honor those men and women and the sacrifices they make, uh, not only outside the country but in communities, mm-hmm. and making our you know communities safer and better places along with our country and. Uh, I learned a long time ago, it's it's really fun to have a hit record. It's great for your career. Label throws you a party. Your mom and dad pat you on the back <laughs> and tell you how important you are for a few weeks. Um, but I learned with If Heaven Wasn't So Far Away uh, that how powerful country music is. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but it was even more special having that song not only be a hit, but then have people come up to me and meet and greets and stuff and go, man, I was down in the dumps after my papa died or my son or my wife, and this really helped me through a difficult time in my life. And so I always thought, man, if I could have another song like that, a lot of people don't get to experience one of them. I said, if ever I could have another song like that that is has a positive impact on people's lives, that would be really special. And so... It's something that's always kind of been on the back of my mind and since that song. And I'm playing it like I do every night and have done for eight years. And, you know, you say the same kind of thing in between songs, mm-hmm. just, you know. And, and I every night I'd say, hey, we'll send this out to the ones that didn't make it back home. And for whatever reason, a couple of years ago, one night that just like a light bulb went off. I go, oh, my gosh, maybe that's that song. And so I just coincidentally had songwriters on the bus and uh, which is ironic because I don't I mentioned earlier I don't do that that much <laughs> and uh, I came back to the bus I said man I had this idea and they both kind of looked at each other like this and you know this it's either that's the dumbest idea I've uh, ever heard or it's really good you know and fortunately with this they thought it was the latter and we sat and wrote it part of it that night and then they finished it the next morning and and uh, so I'm really proud of the fact that now I've been able to. Uh, we've been able to have that song be a, a big record and be heard and have yeah. the platform that I'm, uh, I, you know, am proud that it has. And, yeah. And, you know, hopefully it, it helps some folks out there. I mean, it's always um, admirable to have a, have admirable to have a tribute, <laughs> but um, when it's not necessarily right on the nose in the middle of a conflict, mm-hmm. um, you know, it just it kind of made me smile that, I mean, we wrote only in America when before 9-11, right. you know, and it just so happened that that it was out there. But I was I was proud that we'd made a good patriotic statement for no reason other than, yeah, that's it's how we were feeling about it. Well, you know, another thing is, I mean, it's, we're in such a divisive moment in time, especially in our country. Mm-hmm. 
uh, that I'm of the belief, regardless which side of the aisle you're on, because I have friends on both. You know, sure, we all do. And uh, but surely the one thing we could all agree on is that those men and women should be supported. And uh, so that's just that's something that's that's always kind of been important to me. Let's hope that stays common ground. I hope, man. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Always in, good to Pat. see you, buddy. Thanks good for to having see me you too. All right.